So welcome everyone to our information session on the Insurance Practitioner Apprenticeship Programme. My name is Eva Lavin um, and I'm Head of Education in LIA. We're delighted to see so many people um, tuned in this morning and for your interest in the Apprenticeship Programme. Uh, some of our audience will already be familiar with some aspects and for those that aren't, it's Ireland's first degree Apprenticeship Programme designed specifically around the needs of employers in the life and the general sectors. 2022 marks the seventh year of the programme and LIA is delighted to be involved as an education partner for the sixth year running. Over this time, we have seen the programme grow from strength to strength and really breed new life into our industry. I suppose just to find out a little bit more about our audience this morning, um, we'll launch a poll on screen just to find out whether you're tuning in from an employer or an apprentice perspective. So you should see that up on screen now. While you're completing that poll, I suppose just to give you some facts on our 2021 apprenticeship intake, we received over 1,200 expressions of interest from prospective life and general apprentices. 75 apprentices commenced the programme, 42 of those were based in Dublin and 33 in further locations across Ireland. In terms of age range, the apprentices range from 18 to 49. 48% uh, were female and 52% were male. Uh, 37 employers hired one or more apprentice made up of 26 general insurance employers and 11 life insurance employers. 45% uh, of graduates achieved a first class honours degree in 2021. So I can see the results um, in now for a poll. So it is great. It's great to see a good mix of employers and apprentices online this morning. Um, and this program, you know, wouldn't be where it is today without your participation. Um, so I suppose I'd like now to introduce you to my colleague, Alice, who will chat to an employer, uh, a current apprentice and a graduate apprentice to find out more about their individual experience with the apprenticeship program. Um, but Alice, uh, before introducing the panel, um, could you maybe tell us a little bit more about what exactly the apprentice, apprentice program offers, I suppose, from both the apprentice and the employer perspective? Sure, Eva. Um, thanks very much. And I'm delighted to be here this morning to spread the word on what really is such a fantastic program and opportunity for apprentices and employers alike. And we might first look at the journey of an apprentice, just to put that into context for you um, before we chat to our panel members. So first off, who is the programme suited to? Well, as Eva mentioned, the 2021 cohort consisted of individuals ranging in age from 18 to 49. And I suppose that really encompasses uh, a couple of different cohorts of individuals. First off, we'd have school leavers and they might be sitting there leaving service, for example, this year, or they might potentially have commenced their chosen academic studies at um, third level, but might after a couple of months not be sure whether that program is necessarily for them. And this might be uh, something for them to consider. Another category of individuals who the programme is suited to are both graduates and career changers. And indeed, we have some very interesting stories from our current apprentices who have taken, I suppose, a scenic route to the, to the apprenticeship programme, but are really thriving on it today. For example, in third year, we have um, a lady who has undertaken the Garda training program and she decided then on completion of that that she'd like to switch tack altogether and is now in one of her current third years. We also have someone who completed a degree in journalism and um, for some individuals they just want to change direction or maybe it's a case that they couldn't find a role um, within the area that they're, that they're qualified in. Um, 
Another category then is the career changers. So for example, there might have been um, individuals who have worked in either hospitality or retail for a number of years that were affected by the pandemic. And they just had a look around to see what other opportunities were out there for them and they came across the apprenticeship programme. So they're the types of individuals that undertake the programme. I suppose, in a nutshell, it's a three year commitment by apprentices. And over this time, they'll gain the qualified financial advisor. And we might take a look at this journey map here just to understand how they progress throughout the three year programme. So the apprenticeship will commence in 2022, at which point the students will commence their studies. So they start off with the life assurance module, uh, which they sit in January 2023. Then following that, they sit regulation in May um, and they get the APA in life assurance. After that, they'll sit APA loans, uh, they'll sit the QFA loans module and they'll gain the APA in loans. And then moving into second year then, they'll set QFA pensions in January, followed by QFA investments in May, followed by the final module, then QFA financial advice in September. So by the end of year two, they'll be QFA qualified. And throughout the course of their studies over year one and year two, they'll also be completing business modules alongside the QFA modules. And they might include modules such as teamwork, customer service, and other practical skills that they can bring into the workplace. Then in year three, the students complete a capstone project or a dissertation on a chosen topic. And they might sit down with their employer and decide what topic might be of benefit to the business for them to do some research on. And on successful completion of year three of their studies, they're awarded the BA Honours in Insurance Practice from IT Sligo. So really a comprehensive academic programme. And essentially, it's a four year programme squeezed into three years um, for candidates. And they'll come out not only with the MCC QFA qualification, but also with that level eight degree. So really an attractive option um, for potential apprentices. And I suppose one of the most attractive features for participants is that whilst they're studying towards their level eight degree and MCC qualification, they'll also earn a salary working four days a week for an employer. And one of those days is dedicated to their studies. And good news is that those studies take place online. So at least there's no travel involved for attendance at the lectures. So we'll talk a little bit more about the commitment and workload on the programme with our panel shortly. And who else better to hear it from than individuals who are currently or who have been through the process. But in the meantime, apprentices might wonder how they sign up for the programme. So good news is that this is very simple. What they do is they navigate to earnandlearn.ie. So that's www.earnandlearn.ie. And they register their interest via that website. And there are a number of roles currently being advertised at the moment. So there's 13, I believe, in the life and the general sectors. So they'd look out for a role in their locality and submit their CV and cover letter directly to the employer who then goes through a typical vetting process. Um, the same as you would taking in on any new uh, candidate within the business. Now, of those 13 jobs that are being advertised at the moment, we will expect to see a lot more over the course of the year. I suppose really we're only kickstarting the launch of the apprenticeship program at the moment. So if you're an apprentice and you go on to the website and if you don't see a job in your locality, one suggestion that I'd have for you is to approach employers that are in your area and let them know that this apprenticeship program is available and see if they're willing to take you on. And oftentimes we'll find that these employers, it's the first time they've heard about the apprenticeship scheme and they really embrace the idea of somebody coming to them with the idea of the programme that can really suit both the apprentice and the employer. So once an apprentice has gone through the recruitment process and matches successfully with an employer, 
they start the programme, which commences in September 2022. And employers do have the option of taking someone on in advance of September. And really, we'd encourage this. We'd say that it's really beneficial for a new apprentice to get themselves settled into a new company, ideally two to three months in advance of the course programme date, so that they can get to know the department, get to know the role, um, get to grips with whether it's the in-person or hybrid working model before then they commence the full three-year program, um, which involves, as I said, the four days work a week plus the one day um, education program offered online. So hopefully that gives you a good overview of the process from an apprentice point of view. We'll now also look at it on the flip side from an employer perspective. So really when we get the opportunity to chat with our panel, we'll go through the recruitment process. But in short, you will take on an apprentice. You'll need to be in a position to offer that apprentice a range of work for four days a week that allows them then to develop their skills to thrive within the life sector. And in terms of nominating an apprentice, that could potentially be an existing member of staff, or you may wish to approach us um, to get authorized as an employer, um, in which case, you'll have access to um, the pool of candidates that have registered via Earn and Learn. They'll apply directly for the job spec that you put up and you'll go through your normal recruitment procedures. So what's required from the point of view of, of an employer on the programme? You'll need to nominate a supervisor and what they will do is they will manage the day-to-day -day training of the new apprentice. You'll also need to nominate a mentor and they'll I suppose, look at the journey of an apprentice in perhaps a more holistic manner and provide support and guidance in the workplace to that apprentice. And what are the benefits to you as an employer of participating on the apprenticeship programme? Well, I suppose really essentially what you're getting is access to a fully funded education programme. Um, typically, you, everybody knows the cost of putting uh, kids through um, those of you who are parents on the line today know the cost of putting a kid through college or maybe multiple children through college at the same time. Um, so you are gaining the, I suppose, exposure of the apprentice to the education program, which is fully funded by Solace and the HEA. Also, we're delighted to share with you that the government has extended the grant that's available to employers taking on apprentices so you'll be able to avail of 2,000 euros per year for each of the years that the apprentice remains with you over the duration of the three-year period. So that's 6,000 euros in total. And you can you choose to use that um, exactly how you want within the business. So if you are interested in taking on an apprentice and have questions about the next step in the recruitment process, we'd recommend that you get in touch with us here at LIA We'll put up some contact details at the end um, and we can arrange a call back with you and talk you through the process end to end. So I suppose Eva, that's it in a nutshell, really, from both an employer and an apprentice perspective. It'd be great now once we get the chance to chat to the panel to tease through some of those areas that I've gone through. Um, but I'll hand you back over to you now. Yeah, great. And, and thanks, Alice. I think that definitely gave a good overview um, before we start the discussion with the panel. Um, and I suppose just to remind everyone, um, we want our audience to get as much as possible from this session. So if you do have any questions, we encourage you to submit these using the Q&A box that you'll see at the bottom of your screen. Um, so I think I'll now, I'll hand you now back to Alice, um, who is going to introduce um, the panel. Thanks, Eva. Um, so delighted to be joined here this morning by Mary Fitzpatrick, who is Operations Manager with C CMCC Financial Solutions. Um, also Colin McKiernan, who's a current second year apprentice, again with CMCC. And then finally, Brian McCormack, who's with Murray and Spellman, graduated in 2020 and is a fully fledged qualified financial advisor. 
Um, so I'd just like to thank uh, all three of you for joining us this morning. And I suppose it's all very well and good, myself and Eva telling you about the, um, you know, what a fantastic opportunity that this is. But I suppose really we want to hear it more so from you having been through the programme. And um, we've touched briefly on various aspects, but I'd love to hear more about the recruitment and onboarding process and how, I suppose, employers and apprentices benefit from the programme. So I might start first with you, Mary. Um, CMCC has been in business for over 16 years and um, you would have gone through the recruitment process to um, hire an apprentice for the first time in 2020. And the first question to you is, what attracted you to get involved as an employer on the programme? Thanks, Alice. So I suppose we were attracted to the apprenticeship programme for uh, a number of reasons. We we really didn't see a downside, I suppose, to signing up um, to, to the programme. We really felt that any candidate, I suppose, of any age or skill level, as you alluded to, you know, coming forward and willing to commit to a three year apprenticeship programme, we kind of felt that they would possess, you know, a certain level of maturity and drive that would help to safeguard the future of our business. Um, another, um, I suppose, uh, advantage and um, reason we were attracted to the programme was just in relation to, I suppose, hiring staff uh, previously we would have always funded um, education for our staff to bring them up to minimum competency level and beyond so that involved I suppose both the cost and uh, an administrative burden for the company in that you know we had to uh, enroll staff on modules make sure that registrations were up to date uh, so the apprenticeship program has entirely removed that uh, both the administrative burden uh, in that that's totally managed by the program and also it has removed the cost because the degree program and the qfa are fully government funded so that's been um, a, a huge um, a huge attraction for us um, it, it's it's a it's a brilliant program. It's brilliant for per, prospective apprentices and for us as employers. Um, and, and we've really felt the benefit over the last two years. Great, fantastic. Sounds like it's a win win, really. Um, it sure is. Yeah. And how did you find the recruitment process? Did you nominate internally, or did you go via Earn and Learn to hire your first apprentice? So we went uh, via Earn and Learn. Uh, we felt that it was uh, it it had the best reach and it, indeed we received uh, we see we received a lot of interest in the role so um thankfully we were successful in recruiting um and and the process was absolutely fine it's the same as recruiting ordinarily you know you just have to be mindful i suppose of the minimum requirements um for the candidates but other than that the, the process was was fine Perfect. And those minimum requirements that you're referring to are the entry requirements which are included in our employer guide. Um, so we'd certainly direct any queries from potential employers to our website to have a look at that employer guide. Um, and good news for employers out there is that we have almost 250 expressions of interest at the moment spread throughout the whole of the country. So whether you're a large firm or a smaller broker located in Dublin or anywhere outside of Dublin, there's certainly a pool of candidates there waiting and interested and ready to take on an apprenticeship. Um, interested to hear from you, Mary, are you approaching the recruitment process any differently in 2022? Great news is that uh, because it's worked out so well for you, you are back again this year, oh, yeah. uh, two years later, looking for a further apprentice. Are you doing anything um, in addition to advertising via Earn and Learn, I suppose, to maximize your chances of getting an apprentice yeah. on board? Yeah, we sure are. So I suppose um, I, our approach this year is slightly different. That we've come to, we've come looking for uh, prospective apprentices much earlier than we would have done um, back in 2020. And we do feel it would be a good benefit both to the apprentice and for us in terms of getting someone settled in a few months before they they launch into the actual apprenticeship program. Um, so yes, uh, we've we've uh, shared uh, our job both on Earn and Learn again, and we're also um, sharing it through our so social media channels. Perfect. And I suppose I can't really emphasise that enough for potential employers to, to start looking into, into the whole apprenticeship programme route now with the view to taking on somebody over the next couple of months to give them that chance to bed down fully into 
um, the company before they commence the academic studies. I suppose it's not really for the faint hearted um, from an apprentice point of view. And we might tease that out with both um, Colin and Brian. Colin, I'll come first to you, if you don't mind. Um, what were you doing before you started the apprenticeship programme? I suppose, what category did you come from, whether, whether it was a school leave or a graduate or a career changer? And secondly, why did you choose the apprenticeship route? Why did you feel it was right for you at the time? Yeah, so first thing, good morning, Alice, and everyone on the call. Um, so at the beginning there, you spoke just about the different cohorts that kind of typically joined the programme. And I suppose where I was, my journey started back in 2020, and I had just come out of the leave insert. I was actually part of the um, first year of the predicted grade system. Um, and I suppose everything was kind of, it was just when COVID had first hit, so everything was kind of up in the air. Um, and I suppose my kind of, what I wanted to do was kind of up in the air as well. I kind of played around with the idea of going to tr the traditional route of college. Um, and it was actually just by chance I stumbled across Earn and Learn, um, and I suppose discovered the uh, the opportunities that was there. Um, so I did, I applied through CEO for the college courses and that, but ultimately, I suppose I knew I kind of wanted to get into the, the, the workforce early and try and get experience. And the apprenticeship gave me that opportunity. I also got my qualifications on the side, as well as getting the, the work experience. Um, so luckily, um, I came across the MCC. And from there, I've kind of gone from strength to strength then. Fantastic. And um, can I just ask how you found the transition from leaving CERT to, I suppose, being faced with level seven, eight content on the apprenticeship program. Was that a big jump for you or was that one that you were happy to embrace? Um, yeah, I suppose it was definitely a big jump, but at the same time, it was manageable. Um, so I, the support that I got from both CMCC, the LIA and IT slide was great. There was never any time that you felt overwhelmed or anything like that. So I suppose, the, yeah, it definitely was a big jump. Um, and the workload was heavy, but you had the supports there and still do have the supports uh, to make sure that, that you're not having any hassle at all. Fantastic. And I suppose it's important to recognise the contributions of each of the different bodies there, whether that be LIA supporting the QFA modules, your employer supporting you on a daily uh, basis with um, both work and study, and then IT Sligo um, in the provision of the business modules. I know they have a great support structure and they... Um, organize face-to-face -face days as well. I think there's one coming up soon. Absolutely, yeah. Um, Thursday week is it's actually our first face-to-face -face day. Um, so it's actually the first time that we meet everybody in the course collectively. So, That's amazing, yeah, isn't it? After that, yeah. two years of pandemic lockdown, um, great yeah. to be able to get out and about again. Absolutely. That's amazing, Colin. And I suppose, Brian, um, similar question to you then. Um, I suppose your journey... Um, might be a little bit different to Collins, but you have been through the programme. You've survived and thrived and indeed are thriving at the moment. Um, interested to hear what you were doing before you started the apprenticeship programme and again, why you chose that as uh, the route. Yeah, good morning, everyone. I just want to start by saying that Colin has made me feel very old by mentioning me in sort of 2020. <laughs> I don't know about everyone else on the call, but that, that was a really kick to the butt there at half 10 on a, on a Tuesday morning, but we'll drive on. Um, so yeah, I actually, I'm a, I'm a different side of the uh, experience to, to what Colin had there. So I've um, done my leading search a few years earlier and I had been previously in the golf industry. Um, I had gone to college uh, back in 2007 or 8 when the kind of first recession hit. Didn't finish the course that I was on. I'd done two of the years. It was 11, 7 and then went in and started uh, working in the golf industry. Ended up having similar uh educational uh, standpoint to, to what the Earn and Learn program is now. So I was working while doing exams for, for coaching and stuff golf. But as time went on, I was five or six years in the industry. The, the work-life balance and the seasonal element of it didn't really fit uh, kind of what I wanted over the, the bigger picture, I suppose, over a work-life career. Um, so I started looking in to a return into education because it was always in the back of my mind I wanted to finish a degree. Um, so that was the first driver for me to, to change careers. And I had actually uh, already enrolled uh, to go back as a full-time student, a mature student um, with GMIT. And pretty much at the 11th hour, 
uh, I don't know, was it a Facebook ad or an ad on the paper? One or the other of the Earn and Learn program um, came, came into my university, you could say. And I decided, look, this, this looks very similar to what I'd be getting out of a full-time um, or level education side of it, but I'd be working at the same time. So I, I kind of took a leap of faith, I won't lie. I didn't really know what I was signing myself up for. Um, as it turns out, we were the first live stream back in 2017 of the program as to what it is now. I think it's in year five or six. So they, they had originally piloted on the general life insurance side. So we were the first um, life cycle to go through the system. And then, yeah, got, got interviewed, got lucky enough to get the interview with Murray's family in Galway. And... Um, was able to basically go from there and go through the system, get my QFAs as I as I learned. I didn't really have any office experience, I'm not going to lie. I was never stuck in the nine to five previous to that. So there was a, a little bit of a shock to the system at the, the first week or two, I had plenty of headaches. But over time, as, as I went along, um, I was able to learn the ropes, learn the industry, um, get my exams along the way. I was exposed to many different elements uh, through work. But also then on the other side of it, I was exposed to many different modules through college. And the key focus being uh, time management, balance, um, having to get your assignments in on time, having to go and do your exams at a certain age for your QFAs, and then having your, your four-day work week where you have pipeline of work to do, whether that's doing admin support or whether it's uh, client interaction as you move through the system. Um, so coming out the far end of it, Feel like I got a fully rounded um, experience under the apprenticeship that is just not available uh, through your your standard mainstream third level education. Found myself beside people who had done three year and four year degrees already, and this was their second degree and during the program, and they were using this as an avenue to get into the insurance industry. So um, when we all came out at the tail end of it, uh, we were lucky enough to, to graduate just when the the pandemic hit. So from my point of view, I was doing my dissertation when the world was locked down. Everyone hated it because they were restricted to five kilometers. I had nothing but bibliographies to do and, and recommendations. So I was kind of loving lockdown, to be honest, because I literally nothing else to do when you do my, my final degree, I do my final dissertation. But it was a huge experience overall. Um, I can't I can't talk highly enough of it over the over the three years, and both from an employer and employee point of view. It's as everyone has said previously, the win-win. Fantastic. And what a leap of faith that turned out to be. And we're lucky that you saw that Facebook ad or that Earn and Learn ad um, at the time. Speaking of time management, I suppose one of the key skills that you would have picked up, uh, I need to keep things moving here on my side. Um, so Mary, we'll come back to you then. Um, what do you feel are the benefits of having an apprentice at CMCC? I suppose what has Colin brought as an apprentice to your business and what do you hope to get from the additional apprentice that you're seeking in 2022? Okay so like it's been a huge benefit uh, to us as an organisation uh, in that we have an employee who can apply the theory that he's learning both um, in the degree programme and from the QFA examinations in real time and like as a result of that we have um, we have someone in the organization who's a real benefit to to the company from a very early stage you know um it, it's 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 really been a great um it's really been a great for us and obviously compliance is, is hugely important in our industry um and both in terms of minimum competency and in terms of um uh in terms of uh, the the total regulatory framework, it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, it's it's um, it's a real fast track uh, for your apprentice uh, in both in terms of gaining the minimum competency and understanding that regulatory framework in which we operate, and uh, the transferable skills then that Colin has brought across from the degree program and you know communication skills uh, we've really felt the benefit across uh, across the company and I suppose what we aim to to gain long term is staff retention that we would hope that you know the employees we take on as apprentice uh, as apprentices will stay with the organization long term and that's so important isn't isn't it after the effort that an employer puts into an apprentice likewise Absolutely. the effort that an apprentice puts into the role that um really you want to see this as a long-term um relationship and we want to foster i suppose new individuals coming into the industry 
yeah yeah fantastic and um brian one last question for you then before we go to our audience um questions i see there's a couple coming in there Looking back, can you comment on the degree to which your duties and responsibilities within Marie and Spellman evolved over the three year period and indeed since graduating? Yeah, so so over the three years, again, you start out um, while, while you're learning the ropes, I guess your admin support and you're just really trying to find your feet in terms of uh, the types of products that you're dealing with, uh, what clients expect, going through the systems, as Mary was alluding to there. Then, um, as you get your your QFAs, I would have started uh, contacting clients, you know, face to face meetings, um, then going into more of a sales role. So, really, actually advising on products, selling products, giving advice, and once I got the full degree, I've moved into a full uh, sales role. So I'm a full time advisor now, uh, with a big bank of clients that you're dealing with day to day, and you're really jumping. You know, one minute you're dealing with first time buyers and a mortgage, the next is the retirement bond. So you're jumping from one different product to the other, as everyone um, is in the industry. So uh, the responsibilities have increased, but or skills that I would have learned in year one in terms of, again, time management, pipeline, um, kind of serving many different masters, whether it's your academic life or your work life, have, have helped in my career progression uh, because I know I'm, I'm capable of, of handling that kind of the workload. Um, so you really, as you move along the system, you just trade out a few modules in college to a few more clients uh, that you're working with. It's the same kind of workload concept that you're dealing with. It's just a different, uh, a different task to do each week. And fantastic to see how successful that journey has been from you, from starting off with not necessarily um, any exposure to the finance industry, now to advising clients on, on, a, on a range of, um, I suppose, different options that are available to them um, as consumers. Um, Eva, I think that's it. We've, we've, we've covered a lot there. There probably is still a lot to cover. So that's why we encourage apprentices to get in touch with us. Um, there's a number of supports there that you have up on the screen. There's our website, which contains an employer guide and a, a recruitment guide. Once you're approved as an employer, we will also give you access to an employer resource center on earnandlearn.ie, which will take you through the schedule and the duties and responsibilities and a full calendar, really, of the program year ahead for your apprentice. Um, and we do encourage you to get in touch with us via email at apprentice at lia.ie. We will be sending out a follow-up email after um, this session with all of those contact details as well. But for now, Eva, we might see if there's any questions from our yeah. audience that we can take. Yeah, perfect. And just say thanks to Alice, Mary, Colin and Brian. That was, I think, really useful um, to hear that from both the employer and the apprenticeship uh, side. So, yeah, we have a few questions, I suppose, that have come in um, just in relation. The first one, um, Alice, I might ask you, people are asking if they already hold APAs um, or have sat some of the QFA exams previously, can they participate in the apprenticeship programme? Absolutely. That wouldn't be a bar barrier to entry to the program. There is a limit on the number of modules that an individual can have completed. So it's a maximum of three QFA modules um, that they can have completed. Now, the only thing I will say is that um, participants who have an APA or two under their belt will potentially be at an advantage in that they will fly through the course material. They'll still be required to participate in the weekly classes that take place on a Thursday, um, complete the work-based learning and case studies, but they will be exempt from the exam at the end. So that takes the pressure off. Um, but the program is open to individuals new to the finance sector altogether, or those who perhaps have, um, as I said, up to three modules under their belt. And it might just be a consideration for employers out there as to the type of person that they want to take on, whether they're, um, green and totally new to the industry or whether they have some uh, practical experience under their belt. Great, thanks Alice. Um, another question is in relation to the, the candidate reach of Earn and Learn. Um, are there various channels or are there channels that the, um, I suppose, um, jobs are advertised on? I suppose Earn and Learn um, is really the portal for gathering the um, potential and perspective apprentices who are expressing their interest in the program 
As I mentioned, we have almost 250 um, expressions of interest at the moment. But what we would always recommend to an employer is to advertise similar to what Mary's done with the role on LinkedIn, advertise on social media channels, advertise on your internet if you have one within your company, in a local newspaper perhaps, or jobalerts.ie is a fantastic resource um, that advertises jobs based on a county and they advertise on social media feeds. It goes out to hundreds of thousands of individuals on a weekly basis. So we definitely uh, recommend advertising locally in tandem with Earn and Learn just to maximise your opportunity of getting um, the best potential candidates for the role. Great. Thanks, Alice. There's a few, few questions from employers in on how they can register um, as an employer. So that can be done, I suppose, via our website um, and also by contacting us at apprentice at lia.ie. Um, I think maybe just a time for one final question. Um, and maybe, Colin, you might be able to answer this one. Is people wondering about balancing, I suppose, working full time and studying? Um, how, how did you find that maybe from your experience? Um, yeah, um, so I suppose at first it can be a bit of a shock to the system. You kind of, I suppose, you kind of need to get the balance. Um, what I found personally was you kind of just sitting down at the start of the week or if that's the start of the month, whatever works for you, and kind of planning out what you actually have to get done and get that done. Um, so the way it works actually is um, you would have a case study and a work-based learn. Um, and your supervisor in your company will have to sign off on that. And um, so what I found was great was to try and get that across to Mary um, about a week uh, to five days before that is due. So the two of us can sit down and kind of talk through that. Um, and then if there's any amendments that needs to be done, you have time for that. And then you can get that submitted on time. But ultimately, I suppose it kind of comes down to just creating a plan and sticking to it. Um, and like the workload is tough, but it definitely is manageable. Great. Yeah. No, that's brilliant, Con. Thank you so much. Um, I was just conscious of time. Um, so any questions that we didn't get to, um, we will follow up with those individuals afterwards and respond to your questions. Um, I'd just like to thank again Alice and the panel um, for joining us here today. And thank you as well to everyone for, for tuning in. Yeah.